Hey y'all, hope you're having a good day. Today I'm continuing speaking about the nonlinear polarization and susceptibility. And today we're doing the third order part, which is four wave mixing. So recall from the previous videos that the goal we're aiming towards is to solve the driven damped harmonic oscillator for a third order perturbation. So this equation here is the third the driven damped harmonic oscillator and for perturbations of different orders we assume our solution can be described by first order perturbation plus second order plus third order so on. And in the other two videos we uh, took all the terms with just lambda in them and plugged them into this equation and that's how we got the first order polarization and susceptibility. Similarly for uh, lambda squared and now we're going to take all the terms with lambda cubed in them. And we're going to also recall that from previous videos, we solved for x1 and x2. And this is just a reminder of the equation we got for x sub 1. So it's driven at um, some constant times the electric field that's incident times this denominator function here. And in previous videos, I was calling this d of omega sub i. Okay, so to do the third order part, we need to find all the terms with lambda cubed in them. And if you go through everything, you find that all the terms with lambda cubed in them you end up with a lambda cubed times x1 cubed and you end up with a lambda cubed x1 x2 and a lambda cubed x3 so We've sort of been following a pattern, and it's getting more and more complicated. And to simplify things for the video, in this equation, we're going to assume that the constant A is zero. And this corresponds to just assuming we have a non-centrosymmetric material that the electric field is incident on. Okay, so basically... Um, that boils down to we're ignoring that and our new equation since we're assuming a is zero and plugging these in is going to look like this so now this is the equation we're trying to solve and we already found x1 And since we're doing four-wave mixing now, the most general incident field we can assume is a field with three different frequencies. Frequencies i, j, and k. So I'm going to rewrite this x1 as just this part um, with different frequencies. So I'm doing this. Okay, so that's going to be our most general component that is part of x1 cubed. And if you want to actually do the whole thing, well then you have to take three different sums. So you would put three different sum signs here. And you take the sign over all i frequencies, j frequencies, and k frequencies. And we're making this assumption because... If we write x1 equals and then do a sum of three frequencies and then we cube that, 
Well, each frequency has a complex conjugate, so we get six terms. <laughs> if you take six terms and you cube that whole expression, you're going to get 216 terms. So, I don't have time to write out all those, and I haven't ever seen anybody that does have time or does actually write out all 216. There's a lot of assumptions you can make that simplify things. <laughs> but uh, I won't get into them here. We're just going to find one component. Okay, and note that for this whole video, I'm going to ignore the complex conjugate part. Okay, so the next thing we do is we just plug this x1 cubed in there, and we assume a form for x3. So let's plug x1 cubed in here first and move it to the right side of the equation. Okay, so now that's the equation we're trying to solve. So to solve it, we're going to assume x3 has some part that doesn't depend on time times this exponential part that does depend on time. Same thing we've been doing in the other videos. And since x3 is going to have a bunch of different components, 216, like we said, I'm just going to call this the eighth component, the letter A. Okay, sorry. There's no denominator. That's what we're assuming. So we'll find the first and second derivative of this. Okay, so that's the first and second derivative. I just didn't write out the whole exponential because it's the same thing as up here. And now we plug these into this equation and we pull out the x a naughts to the three. Well, okay, I don't know how you say this in words. We're going to pull out this constant and everything else is going to be in parentheses. And we're going to divide that thing. Okay, so that's what we get for our solution. It is probably what you might have guessed, or what you might have expected. So, now, as we did in previous videos, we say, okay, the polarization, third order polarization, we're doing component A, is equal to the susceptibility component A. Uh, there's the uh, the uh, constant on here too. The susceptibility component A and the electric field cubed, the total electric field. Okay, but that's also equal because the polarization is the dipole moment per unit volume is equal to negative. N epsilon naught times the electric charge times um, 
each uh, X here. Oh, sorry, this should be a three. Okay. So that when there's a knot, there's no exponent. When there isn't a knot, there's an exponent. So this part is equal to Okay, and now we compare this part to this part. Well, this part just corresponds to the total electric field cubed. So therefore, chi must equal this. Chi 3. Okay, so here we go. This is what we're looking for, the third order susceptibility. And you get the polarization by just plugging that in there. And like we said, there's 216 terms. Now, all these terms have names. Some of them do. And stimulated Raman scattering is one of those. And it's a special case where two of the frequencies are equal to each other. And the third one is such that if you take the difference between those, it's a vibrational frequency. So, I think I might have got a minus sign wrong somewhere, because I think this should be positive. But essentially, that's the gist of it. If you want the super rigorous, uh, if you want to super rigorously follow through, grab your favorite nonlinear optics book. Um, but this is the way it's done classically. So in future videos, we're going to be doing the same thing, but we're going to solve it uh, quantum mechanically. And that will give us things such as the Kramer's Heisenberg Dirac expression for Raman scattering. That's what we're working towards. Okay, but anyways, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.